Hello, welcome back. Uh, Eric Darling here with Darling Data. And I know, I know that you probably can't tell by looking uh, behind me, but I have a freshly steamed green screen with uh, no weird artifacts, at least, at least at the moment. We'll see what happens. We'll see if, we'll see if the lighting in here cooperates. Uh, right now I have basically the equivalent of a full tanning bed uh, blasting light at this thing. So hopefully, aside from some weird artifacts <laughs> where my, my tattoo colors uh, match the color of the, the green screen chroma key stuff, uh, we, can, we can avoid any unpleasantness. So <laughs> sorry if that's distracting. Uh, anyway. Uh, I wanted to talk uh, a little bit today about uh, join simplification in SQL Server. I was going to record this yesterday, but I got terribly, horribly sidelined by uh, allergies, which you can probably still hear some remnants of from this absurdly large nose of mine. So there are, of course, rules to when things can be simplified. Uh, there are a number of other simplification rules and steps uh, outside of joins. But uh, I think joins are probably a pretty interesting one to start with, at least for now. Uh, I'm not going to fix that in post. You can just deal with it. Uh, so one time when uh, joins can't be simplified, and I'm going to explain simplified as we sort of look at execution plans, um, is when we, I mean, we can just get an estimated plan for this one, right? So what happens here is because uh, this is a write outer join. And this could happen in a situation where the optimizer rewrites a query to use a right join rather than a left join. It can reorder and reorganize all the things that it wants. But because we do this and the results that we get here add nulls to what comes out of the users table, right? This u.id u column that we're selecting, um, we get this query plan over here where we have to touch both the votes table and the users table. SQL Server couldn't simplify that away because we were going to get additional results back from the users table, so it added nulls to the output where nulls didn't exist before. The column that we're selecting here and the column that we're joining to here, that's the primary key. It's a clustered index of the users table, so no nulls are allowed to exist in there. Another place where uh, SQL Server is allowed to uh, simplify joins is when um, we don't select, we're not projecting any columns uh, from a table that is outer joined to, and we wouldn't get any duplicated rows. Now, this is a fake join because this isn't actually the relationship between posts and users. I'm joining on two unique columns, the ID column and both table, again, primary key clustered index. So SQL Server knows that there's not going to be a many-to-many -many relationship here. If we get the estimated plan for this query, you'll notice that unlike the query plan for the last query that we looked at, sorry, that jumped around a little bit, and this one we only touch the users table, right? So that join to the post table is completely taken out of uh, the query optimization uh, steps. It's, it's pruned out, as smart people might say. <coughs> now, uh, if we look at this query, which is an inner join to, uh, from the users table to the users table, which I know looks a little weird, but what we're going to do is uh, run this and get the estimated plan. And SQL Server is actually not free to simplify this one, we touch both tables. And the reason why is because we used an inner join, and an inner join might actually eliminate rows. Uh, this one's a little funny because, you know, uh, we're joining the table to itself on its own primary key. So maybe simplification could be a little smarter. I don't know. I don't, I don't think I like this one very much. But in this example, where we wouldn't actually eliminate any rows because we have an additional... Uh, condition here, or rather we're doing a left outer join here, uh, what we're going to see is SQL Server only hit the user's table once on that one. SQL Server can also apply that to much larger queries. So I'm going to run this whole thing, and the only part of this that really, really matters is way down at the bottom. And I do apologize to the greater SQL Server community for having that column up there uh, has a 
leading comma, but I only do that to make life easier when I need to quote it out. So you can deal with it just for this one query. And if we get the estimated plan for this one, we get this whole gigantic query plan back. If we say zoom to fit, you can sort of start to grasp the absolute magnitude of this thing. It, it, every single uh, one of those derived, join, derived left joins that we do throughout the entire query is uh, part of the query plan. SQL Server hits all of these things. If we change this query just a touch, and again, apologize for the leading comma. Hopefully no one, no one beats me up at the next conference. We quote that out, and we rerun this whole entire thing just like before, and we get the, well, we're not, not going to run it, but we are going to get the estimated plan for it. The estimated plan this time around is much simplification, simplified, because we only touch the user's table this time. We don't do all the other joins. We don't do all the other work. So SQL Service Query Optimizer, when it's looking at uh, the query that you send into it, one thing that it's going to do is try to find things that it doesn't have to do. The optimizer is lazy, just like me. And if it doesn't have to do some work because it just doesn't need to, it's going to find a way to not do that work. Query simplification can apply in a lot of places. Um, if you, like uh, part of it would be like contradiction detection, right? So if you have a query that's like where ID equals one and ID equals two, SQL Server is going to say, well, ID can't be one and two at the same time. Even if you're one of those nudniks that does like a comma separated list <laughs> in an ID count, it can't be one and two uh, simultaneously. So it, it would just give you a constant scan and say, guess what? Your query didn't give me anything. So that's fun. And uh, I don't know, I think that's it. Uh, this is sort of another uh, little test run video with the new setup. Make sure audio comes through well. Make sure video comes through well. Make sure that the green screen is still mostly functioning, except where it looks like I have holes in my arm over here, which is interesting anyway. Well, I don't know. That's it. I'm going to go blow my nose. <laughs> These allergies are awful. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed yourselves, and I will see you soon, soonly, in another video, hopefully with my simplified recording setup. Thank you for watching.